Hi, my name is Michelle Dawson, and I've been at Georgia Tech since November of 2008. And I am s going to show a few slides from the work that I did as a postdoctoral research fellow at Massachusetts General Hospital working in the lab of Rakesh Jain. And then I'm going to go on and tell you a little bit about the lab that I've started at Georgia Tech. So the work that I did at uh, Massachusetts General was focused on looking at the role of bone marrow derived cells in the growth of tumors and the formation of metastasis. And this image shows a metastatic tumor in the lungs of a C57 black 6 mouse. And you can see the metastatic tumor in the center of the portion of the slide. And these green cells are bone marrow cells. These bone marrow cells form a really important portion of this metastatic tumor in that they line these vessels, stabilizing the vessels and allowing for the continuous growth of this metastatic tumor. So bone marrow cells are used throughout our body to heal wounded tissues and to contribute to new um, tissue growth. And in the case of a cancer where soluble growth factors are released by the tumor cells, these soluble growth factors move throughout the circulation and they trigger cells in the bone marrow to be released into the blood circulation. These released cells can move through the bloodstream and enter the tumor where they contribute to the formation of new blood vessels. In the studies that I did at Massachusetts General Hospital, we used a bone marrow transplant mouse model to look at the accumulation of these bone marrow cells in metastatic tumors. And in our studies, we used a C57 black 6 or an FEB mouse that was um, irradiated, which depletes the cells in the bone marrow compartment. We then replaced those cells with cells from a GFP positive mouse. The new mouse then would have um, bone marrow cells that express the green fluorescent protein, which would allow us to track those cells in our studies. These are some tissues that were isolated from the bone marrow transplant mice. These are spleen tissues, kidney, liver, muscle, and lung. And this is a tumor tissue. And on the bottom panel, you can see the tissues accumulated that were isolated from the beta-actin GFP mouse, which expresses GFP constitutively versus the bone marrow transplant mouse. And you can see in the bone marrow transplant mouse, there's only a few bone marrow cells in normal tissues. But if you look at a tumor tissue, it's just loaded with bone marrow cells. So the bone marrow cells are important to the growth of tumors, and they accumulate very rapidly in those tumor tissues, helping this tumor to continue to grow. There are different signaling pathways that are involved in the process of recruiting bone marrow cells to tumors. In our studies, we were focused on the role of VEGF receptor 1 signaling. We looked at the effect of using different antibodies to block this signaling pathway on the accumulation of bone marrow cells in the primary tumor, the metastatic tumor, and in different regions of the body. This is a cartoon of the study that we did in the lab. We had a bone marrow transplant mouse that was subcutaneously implanted with tumor cells. We then treated this mouse throughout the course of this study, and we looked at the accumulation of bone marrow cells in the primary tumor. We then resected the primary tumor, and we looked at the accumulation of bone marrow cells in the lungs prior to and after the formation of spontaneous metastasis. These are some tissues that were collected from our studies. We looked at the effect of these bone marrow cells on the growth of Lewis lung carcinoma tumors and of B16F1 melanoma tumors. We also looked at the accumulation of these bone marrow cells in the primary tumor at important regions of the tumor, including the tumor muscle border, where metastasis starts to begin. We also looked at metastatic tumors that formed in the lungs. So this is the um, data that shows the accumulation of bone marrow cells in the primary tumor. And we found that some of the antibodies that we used in our studies were able to reduce the accumulation of bone marrow cells in the primary tumor, but not all of them. We also looked at accumulation of bone marrow cells in the lungs in different regions, either in the metastatic tumor or in the tissue surrounding the metastatic tumor. We were interested in determining whether a metastatic niche leads to the formation of metastatic tumors. And we found that some of these antibodies could reduce the accumulation of bone marrow derived cells in the lungs and in metastasis specifically. We believe that this was in part to the blocking of these soluble growth factors that lead to the accumulation of bone marrow cells. 
We also looked at the effect of tumor condition media on the growth of tumors and metastasis. And we wanted to determine whether the soluble growth factors that are released by tumors could increase the number of bone marrow cells that accumulate or the formation of metastasis. And we found that with the tumor condition media, we had more metastasis, especially in melanoma um, bearing mice. We also looked at the accumulation of bone marrow cells, but surprisingly, we didn't find that there were more bone marrow cells in tumors, but we did find that there were more metastatic niches. So although the blockade, so although the soluble growth factors didn't increase the number of bone marrow cells that accumulated in a specific metastatic tumor, they increased the number of metastatic tumors and thereby the number of metastatic niches that had formed. So I've just given you a few highlights of the studies that I've recently completed at Mass General. And since I've been here, I've started a lab that is focused on looking at stem cells and how we can engineer these as gene delivery vectors. The stem cells that we're working with are bone marrow-derived stem cells that are isolated from different strains of mice. Using mice in our studies is important because then we can isolate cells that are syngeneic, and when we reimplant them with tumors, we can find out how these cells will affect the immune response. And these are some slides illustrating the um, different ways that we characterize the cells that we isolate from mice, including using the colony-forming assay to determine whether these cells are able to regenerate, and using different differentiation assays to be able to determine whether they can differentiate into different types of tissues. Now, we're interested in looking at how soluble growth factors that are released by tumors alter the migration of mesenchymal stem cells that we would like to use in our gene delivery vectors. So in the studies that I show here, we used DSRED to transfect these cells, which gives us a label so we can identify our cells. You can see that they're all fluorescent after the transfection. We then looked at the migration of these cells in a Boyden chamber assay, and we looked at the effect of tumor condition media on the migration of these cells. We find that tumor condition media increases the migration of mesenchymal stem cells using this transwell migration assay. We also find that it alters the morphology of these cells. And this was very interesting to us since we're interested in determining if soluble growth factors alter the cytoskeletal rheology of cells. And to look at the rheology of cells, we're going to use the technique of multiple particle tracking. In this case, particles are embedded in the cytoskeleton using a ballistic particle injection system. And these are some polystyrene particles and some novel particles that we might use in our lab. And we inject these cells into the cytoplasm. We then measure the traces of their motion with respect to time. And from that information, we can get qu quantities such as the mean square displacement with respect to time. And from this, we can determine the diffusion coefficient and the rheological properties of the region of interest or the tracking region. So I've told you a little bit about the work that I finished at Massachusetts General and about work that I've just started here at Georgia Institute of Technology. The lab that we're focused on developing is interested in combining these concepts of tumor biology, biophysics, and stem cell biology to use us to be able to, be able to develop uh, mesenchymal stem cell gene delivery systems that can overcome current transport barriers.